Russia has been facing many problems in Africa to the point where countries in Africa are seeing a massive increase in violence. You have Russian fighters being ambushed in countries they have supposedly secured. Now, what is happening? Because Russia was a massive threat to the United States and to Europe because Russia was gaining a lot of ground within Africa. Well, in this video, we're going to be breaking down how Russia sort of stabbed themselves in the back and sort of created their own vacuum of violence so stick with me in this video we're gonna learn a lot and not only that we're going to learn that the United States and Russia technically are fighting the same enemy yet are facing the same problems like why not work together well we'll get into all of that so again please stick with me now, the first thing we need to understand is that Russia has a massive influence within Africa. They have a really big footprint. But when we say Africa, we can't generalize Africa. We need to go specific country by country. So here is a map of where Russia actually has influence and boots on the ground within Africa. Wherever you see some troops, like over here in Mali, Libya, Sudan, those are actual Russian troops where you have boots on the ground. And wherever you see these shields or diamond shapes, they have a a pact agreement to at least be mutually friends with Russia. So as you can see, they really do have a really big footprint. Now, when we say Russian troops, boots on the ground, this is sort of a gray area. Now, before we get into Africa, everything really starts in Ukraine, more specifically in the region of Crimea. Now, when the whole Ukrainian conflict started back in 2014, a lot of people, again, who are new to the party think this was like only a year ago when Russia was messing with Ukraine. No, this has been going on for a long time. You had what were called these little green men. There were green men just walking into Ukraine, Crimea, and they annexed Crimea, Ukraine. Now, now, these green men, we now know they are what are called Wagner Group or Wagner PMC. And Wagner essentially is a security contracting company who fights on the behalf of Russia. So remember that they fight on the behalf of Russia. Many of these troops are Russian troops, if not all of them. But they also have tactics to implement within countries to essentially uh, recruit other people to join Wagner. But, but before we get into all that, understand everything started in Ukraine. Ukraine. And if your geography is not great, Crimea is right down here in the south of Ukraine. Crimea is a massive important asset to Ukraine because there are deep warm water ports where Russia can repair their ships. And that is why Crimea was the first objective for Russia. However, it wasn't necessarily Russia. It was Wagner Group. Because remember, I said there's this gray area where I say there are Russians in Africa because, yes, they are Russians, but it's not necessarily Russia themselves. It's Wagner Group. Again, remember all of this. Now, before these Wagner fighters, these Russians go to Africa, we now know that these fighters actually went to Syria, essentially to prove themselves, to fight the enemy one-on-one. -on -one. I can't say what the enemy's name is on here, but they're really bad guys that start with the letter I. What's even more interesting is that the United States first finds themselves in a situation where they're like, who are these Wagner fighters? Are these actual Russian fighters? Or who are these guys? These are like security contractors. And here's what's even more interesting. U.S. Special Forces and Wagner fighters actually found themselves in legit battle, like one-on-one -on -one fighting. The battle is called Kasham. And this was a massive turning point to where the United States realized that even though Russia and the United States are fighting the same common enemy in a country, none of that matters because these Wagner fighters are really ruthless. They'll go after anyone to claim their territory, almost like a predator where they don't want other predators in the territory because understand this, Wagner, although they are Russian fighters, at the end of the day, they're not necessarily the Russian government. They are a business. So if the United States is in a region or other foreign entities that make Wagner look bad, Wagner is out of a job. So Wagner needs to make sure that they are the only people in a country, no other assets. You need to rely on Wagner because, again, that's how Wagner makes their money. Now, let's actually get to Africa and see how Wagner managed to essentially create their own empire in Africa. However, this empire seems to be falling apart. Now, these are the actual countries in Africa where Wagner has boots on the ground, where Wagner is actually fighting um, an opposition. Now, before we talk about who this opposition even is, we need to talk about this. 
Wagner is very sly and sneaky. They operate beyond just boots on the ground. What they do is they pretty much come to your country on behalf of Russia. So they will promise you security, but not only that, they promise a country that we will create ties with Russia. We will ensure that if anything happens to your country, no matter what, you will always be supplied with arms. You will always get the best deal on the new technology that's coming out. And what's also interesting, on this map, you have a lighter red area where there's speculation where Wagner might be fighting. This Wagner is a little old. I mean, this map is a little old because number eight here where Burkina Faso is, we now know that Wagner is involved in Burkina Faso. So again, where you have these light uh, red shaded areas, there's a lot of reason to believe that uh, maybe Wagner's not necessarily boots on the ground, but they have a lot of influence there because they also operate in the digital space, creating like troll farms, creating uh, misinformation in areas. And we'll get into all of that, but I wanted to give you the visual of where actually Wagner operates, boots on the ground and possibly boots on the ground. Now, one of the big reasons as to why Wagner and the mission for Russia and Africa is falling apart is how they do business um, in these African countries. They find countries almost in a very colonial way, finding a country that's already falling apart or trying to force a country to fall apart with maybe a coup or kicking out other foreign assets so that Wagner becomes the guys you have to work with. Now, something else Wagner does is they don't necessarily work directly for money. They also like to work for trade. So maybe um, Mali, Africa, who's rich in gold, will have to give Wagner some of their gold assets. And then in turn, again, we're going to secure your country. You'll be tied to Russia. Everything, everything is great. So understand this. Wagner is taking a very colonial approach. And although this might work in the short term, when you look at everyone in Africa who's ever tried to colonize Africa, eventually they've all fallen apart. I mean, look at France. They're being kicked out of almost every single country. But not only that, Wagner also seems to be behind the force that's kicking the French out of Africa. In fact, we have a direct correlation to see how countries who have aligned themselves with Wagner, it's actually gotten way worse. However, we can speculate that Wagner wants this to happen because the worse the country is doing, the more the country relies on Wagner to be there in Russia. So that's one of the speculations as to why certain countries are falling apart. Nonetheless, we do have direct evidence and data to show how Wagner operates in a country. Mali being the case study, we see here in 2020, we have 376 violent events. And when they say a violent event, this could be anything from um, a really big attack to a small attack. Um, it's sort of generalized, but nonetheless, it's more of a visual to show you where right now the UN is operating in 2021 and 2020, you have UN and African assets who are helping to secure Mali and to fight in Mali. And you can see in 2021, we went from 376 to 600, which is still not good. But then we have in 2022 where Wagner starts to get involved, 600 to 862 violent events. And not only that, we also have evidence that Wagner is also a part of these violent events because Wagner understands the good thing for them is, well, we're not technically Russia, we're Russian, and we represent Russia, but we're not Russia. So they go into these African countries and they also stir the pot themselves. And then when you go up to... Oh, also understand this. In 2022, this is when Wagner started to restrict the French. They started to restrict the UN. And eventually, Mali kicked the French out because, hey, they said, you know what? We're tied in with Wagner. We have one of the best fighting forces in the world to back us up. When you go to 2022 to 2023, Mali starts to look like a pepperoni pizza with all of these violent attacks happening throughout Mali. And we'll get into what's happening today with Mali, as in Wagner fighters are actually being ambushed and captured. But nonetheless, I wanted to give you the visual to show you how Wagner stirring their own pot is actually causing them to fail in these countries. Now, I know some of you are wondering, when am I going to talk about this guy? Because you can't talk about Wagner without talking about this guy right here, Yevgeny Prigozhin. And if you're late to the party, he used to be in charge of Wagner Group. And the reason why I say he used to be in charge is because recently his jet crashed, allegedly. Uh, many people speculate Russia took it out himself, but he was the head of Wagner. He is a multi-billionaire businessman. Um, he used to be Putin's chef, so there was a lot of trust behind this guy in Wagner. So Wagner essentially could do whatever they want. So you need to understand, Wagner also had a CEO, if you will, 
who was very successful in his campaigns. He was loved for the Rus- from Russia, loved by Putin, and he was really good at manipulating African countries to believe anything he said, and I'll show you why. You have to understand Wagner was actually doing a you have to understand Wagner was actually rather successful in Ukraine's campaign. Now, thankfully, Ukraine was able to take back positions from Wagner. However, again, Wagner, they were heroes to Russia. Prigozhin uh, was a hero to Russia. And then eventually you had the whole um, turn on Russia where Wagner was literally marching to Moscow to recapture Russia, to shake things up. And this was a massive turning point for Wagner because this right here was the height of Wagner to show how powerful they were, to show how they were able and willing to march on their own territory territory to show they're all about freedom they're all about giving people another chance and this right here we can see how wagner used these tactics and how pergozin used this persona um, as his influence in africa now pay attention because all of these timelines are relevant um, eventually, the Wagner coup failed, and Pergozin was told, you need to go over to Belarus, no more Wagner fighters in Russia. It was a really big scandal, but eventually, Pergozin and Putin allegedly squashed their beef. Everything was all good to go. And then you had an African summit where Pergozin was actually able to meet face to face with world leaders alongside with Putin and give a lot of promises, promise freedom, promise security, promise free money, promise grain. All of these promises were happening. And Pergozin again was at the height of his reign. Um, Wagner was out of Ukraine and was set to go fight in Africa. This was a really big deal. And it was a really big cause for concern, not only by the United States, but really by the rest of the world. And again, behind this fighting force of Mr. Prigozhin and Wagner, you had President Putin himself talking about how he wants to work with these African countries. He wants to work in Africa. But understand this, besides the economic aspect of things, the guys who are these boots on the ground, the guys who are uh, this gray area, it's Wagner. So whenever Putin talks about, well, we're going to send Russian assets, we're going to send boots on the ground, it's actually PMC, uh, Wagner PMC who's fighting on behalf of Putin. But understand this, at the same time, summit that you just saw Mr. Pergozin shaking hands with an African leader, everything goes downhill real quick. At right there is Mr. Pergozin's jet falling to the ground. Pergozin and another high key leader to Wagner, they passed away. Now again, many people speculate that Russia was the cause to this. But um, this was the massive turning point for Wagner's fall and Russia's fall or decline in Africa. Because just a few days before this plane crash and this plane incident, this is what Pergozin was saying. And this was the tone of Wagner. They were about to truly bring the fight to Africa. And again, it was going to be very problematic because Wagner was at full force. Um, they were feeling good. They were highly motivated. They had a, um, a base in Belarus where they could be free and safe. However, again, remember, this is what Mr. Bergozin was saying just a couple of days before this plane crash. Plus 50, все как мы любим. ЧВК Вагнер проводит РПД, делает Россию еще более великой на всех континентах, а Африку еще более свободной. Справедливость и счастье для африканских народов. Кошмарим ИГИЛ, Аль-Каиду и других бандосов. Берем на работу настоящих богатырей. И продолжаем выполнение задач, которые были поставлены. Okay, so you have Pergozin saying we're going to make your country more free. Uh, they're calling Africa uh, the greater of nations. So again, you have this tone of we're coming for you, Africa. We're coming to save you. We're coming to set you free. And this is sort of a passive aggressive way of saying... <laughs> So you can see Mr. Pergozin, Wagner was, had, so you can see there was this tone and motivation of we're coming for you, Africa, we're going to set you free, um, we're going to fight these militant groups, um, he was calling Africa the greater of nations, you know, 
putting Africa on this pedestal. And this was really a very passive aggressive way of calling out the United States, calling out the French, calling out the UN that Wagner is here to fight, not them. Get them out of the way. Trust us. Work with us. Because again, Wagner is a business. So Wagner's not going to come set you free unless you give him some of your gold or give him some of your assets. So this was a really big turning point because, again, a couple of days after this video, that's where you had the plane crash. And then all of a sudden, that's where things start to go downhill because no one knew, to include Wagner, what the mission was in Africa anymore. Another massive issue for Wagner is when you don't have a competent leader and you don't have the full backing of President Putin, they are fighting and operating in one of the most dangerous regions in the world. I would actually argue this is the most dangerous region in the world. Um, this is called Sahil, or the Sahil region in Africa. And the United States is also operating here um, in Niger and Nigeria because you have to understand Mali, Chad, and Sudan um, are all operating under P, uh, Wagner PMC. So what you have to know about the Sahil region and why Wagner needs a competent leader and why Wagner and Russia are falling apart, this being the most dangerous region in the world, these militant groups attack anyone and everyone. They attack their own people, but they especially love to attack Westerners or outside forces. So Wagner um, essentially has a bounty on them where Wagner fighters are actually being targeted. And when I showed you that graph um, towards the middle of the video, Mali is a great example of where Wagner is just getting hammered left and right and recently even had drone assets stolen from them. Um, they were ambushed by these militant groups. So now again, remember, you have their competent leader who is not, not here anymore. You don't have the full backing of Russia. And also understand this, when you're operating in the most dangerous region in the world, you need everything to work perfect for you. Another massive reason as to why Wagner um, in Russia is not doing so well in Africa is because the United States is doing a really good job. You see, the United States and Wagner, they're fighting the same common enemy but have different interests in the region. Now, the reason why this is relevant is because it goes to show that even though you're both fighting the same bad guys, it all depends what your motives are, and I'll even give you a historical comparison. The Soviets in the United States were on the same team towards the end of World War II, yet it didn't really matter. After World War II, uh, we became mortal enemies and we had uh, the Cold War and then we have issues up until today. So again, this, this, uh, I wanted to show you guys this to, you know, Soviets in the U.S. We've always had this weird bond of we both understand we have a moral obligation to help and fight for these countries, but Russia wants a lot of money and Russia wants a lot of assets in these African countries. The United States just wants to bring the fight to these enemies and they are investing in these African countries to hopefully be a little more safe so that the United States becomes a little more safe. Quick side note, Winston Churchill, um, leader of the British in World War II, he actually wanted to invade the Soviet Union and to completely eliminate the government structure. And um, he was called crazy. He was called destructive himself. Nonetheless, we would be having a way different conversation today if we went ahead and attacked the Soviet Union when they were actually at their weakest towards the end of World War II. Something else that Russia does that also really stabs themselves in the back is that they continue to feed nations and they continue to create violence within these nations. The country of Sudan, perfect example, um, there was this civil war essentially still going on at the time of making this video and the United States actually had to pull assets out of Sudan and pull their embassy out of Sudan. Um, there was enough reason to believe that eventually the civil war, you know, there was a peace agreement, things were cooling off, but then all of a sudden, um, the rebel groups started to reinstigate the civil war and it's still going on today, but many people were like, well, what's going on? There should be no more ammunition. Like where are they getting all this ammo from? Wagner and Russia are providing Sudan um, ammunition to continue the civil war, to continue this destabilization. Because again, remember this, Wagner doesn't have a job if a country is stable. They need a country to be as unstable as possible so that Wagner gets paid to be there. But again, this stabs Wagner in the back because their own fighters get attacked. So they lose their own company assets. And also eventually the people are going to get smart and realize, hey, look, it's Wagner who's doing all this. It's Russia who's doing all this. Kick them out. So that's why I was saying this whole colonialism um, 
trying to go into countries and capture them and, and ruin them. It didn't work out for any European superpower who went into Africa. It worked out for like almost a hundred-ish years, but now it's really stabbing them in the back. Again, go look into how France is being kicked out of almost every single country they were aligned with through their colonialism ties. So ultimately, when you combined all of the evidence as to what's happening, number one, the head of Wagner, Mr. Pergozin, was the best thing that could have ever happened for Wagner. He was just really good at his job. I don't think this guy was a good guy. I don't think Wagner are good people, but he was really good at rallying the troops and he was really good at influencing African countries. I mean, he was the brainchild behind creating a misinformation farm of creating troll tweets, creating news articles, sending them to direct areas in Africa to be a like, look, the French are bad. Look what the French did. Uh, Wagner is great. Russia has the greatest economy in the world. And um, so when you have a leader like this who operates on all different levels through the cyberspace, through boots on the ground, uh, through like these espionage acts, he was really good at his job. So when you take him out, you lose one of the biggest assets uh, to Wagner. Again, recapping, another reason why Wagner's falling apart is they kick assets out like the UN, they kick the French out of these countries, and they lose all of these allied support to help fight the common enemy. Wagner pins himself in a corner of taking out these troops who were securing the countries and making them better, and now Wagner says, well, we're going to secure these countries, we're going to make it better, but we have evidence and graph, and we have, we have so much evidence to show that whenever Wagner does this and goes into a country, those countries' uptick in violence just spikes. It gets worse and worse. And of course, the natural nature of fighting in regions like the Sahel, and I'd even go as far to say fighting in the Congo regions, um, it's just a very terrible environment to fight in. You have to be really good at your job. And when Wagner is losing all of their assets, losing all of their momentum, you need to have all of that when you fight in the Sahel region. The Sahel region, um, again, very terrible area. I feel really bad for the civilians who work in this area, but Wagner did it to themselves. They volunteered to fight in this region in exchange for gold, in exchange for natural resources. But unfortunately, again, for Wagner, it's all falling apart. They're getting ambushed. These countries are starting to smarten up and realize Wagner is the reason why all of this is happening. And of course, the last reason, the United States is essentially countering everything Wagner does. Whenever Wagner puts out misinformation, the United States tries to fact check them. The United States goes into these countries and works not for natural resources, but, st but they work for peace. They work for democracy. They work uh, to be your ally. Now, this is not necessarily uh, a full-fledged plan because this, this plan for the United States is also not going that great, especially in the country of Niger, where the United States is very close to having to leave. Unfortunately for the United States, due to the French and other colonial powers who have ruined their relationships with other African countries, the United States is starting to feel the force of that. Even though the United States had, not had nothing to do with those colonial powers, them being there now and them being a Western asset, it doesn't matter. They want them kicked out. So... The United States is doing everything they can to counter Russia in Africa. However, Russia does have the momentum over Africa, um, over the United States. But unlike the United States, you have direct cause and correlation for more violence in these regions. And this is only going to backfire in the face of Wagner and Russia. So that's a very simple, quick breakdown on what's happening. All the way from Ukraine to Syria to Africa, Wagner really was this gray area of boots on the ground as ambassadors to Russia and to Africa. But again, um, with Russia promising all this free money, all this free grain, it only goes so far. Those are, those are limited resources. These African countries want security. They want economic stability. And Russia just is not providing that. And eventually they're going to crack, they're going to fall like we're seeing in Mali. Mali is the perfect case study to show how bad it's getting for Russia. I mean, we're talking literally falling apart. We're talking about regions in Mali who've never seen violence almost in their entire history that's getting worse and worse. And to be fair, Russia is instigating the problem all the way from Mali to Sudan and to the Congo. And so we have a lot of reason to believe this is why Russia is failing. They're doing it to themselves and they're being very dishonest to these African countries. The African countries are the ones who are suffering, and that's why I'm making this video, to put it out there so you guys realize what's actually happening. And I go advise you to go fact check me, go actually look into what's happening, go study Mali, because again, wherever Russia ties themselves with, wherever Wagner is, the violence gets worse and the countries start to fall apart.